Hey kids, welcome to Glenn's Model Garage. Model Garage. Where we do models and we do die cast cars. And anything else that's toy related, I guess. So this is a vintage mint Husky Ferrari from my collection. I've had this since I was a little kid. Like I've said many times, I used to buy two of each, one to play with and one to put on a shelf or open up and look at and just put it back in a case, a carrying case. So that's what this one um, went through. The second one, which is this one right here, has been through the war. And at one time, it looks like it was stepped on. I don't remember because these cars are, they go back to the late 60s, early 70s. Forget the year on this one, but definitely in that time frame. So it was flattened and the body was squashed. And you wonder, well, can you repair those? And the answer is sure. Uh, it just takes a little bit of uh, patience and uh, a couple little tricks. So right now, this car has got clumps of crap all over it, and you're wondering what that is. Inside, too. I don't know if you can see it. Hopefully the light's shining on it. And what that is, is uh, it's a gel glue. Crazy glue makes a gel. I prefer Gorilla Glue but in gel form. So what you try and do is straighten out the body as much as you can you can. Uh, these parts can only bend so much before they break. Um, three of the pillars were broken on this but one still held. And I have the new ones as a guide to try and get things lined up right. So what I do is I take the gel, it's fairly thick, and I dab it on the brakes where the part was broken and, and it takes a while, a little while, a little bit longer than the other regular stuff to, uh, to set. I take baking powder and with these little kind of uh, tweezers, it's got little pallet, paddles on the end. I pinch some of the powder, some of the uh, baking soda powder, and I drop it onto the wet glue. And then with a toothpick, kind of merge, mess it around in there, try and get it to mix. Then I add another drop of glue, and then I put one more coat of baking powder on it. And believe it or not, it actually hardens enough that you can file it down, paint the car, and uh, you can't even tell the difference. If you take the patience to do all the contours um, for the windows and uh, the pillars, it'll look exactly the same as the original. So that's what we're doing with this one. So this one will be dry. I like to let them sit overnight. It's already dry now, but when it comes to filing and stuff, I want to make sure it's good and strong because when you start filing, you don't want, to, uh, want it to break if the glue's not set yet. So this car is, it's not going to go back to original because I want to change the wheels. I want to mod this one up with uh, some aftermarket wheels, uh, possibly even Hot Wheels, but I don't know. You can order tons and tons of wheels online for 64 scale die cast uh, and customize any one of your cars. It's real easy to do. And there's so many videos online that are far more superior than the, than uh, my uh, hack ones here. There's guys that their, their, their job is doing die cast cars and they have millions of views on their, their website. So this is just my Mickey Mouse fix it. I've seen them do it. Uh, I've done this for years uh, when the, ju the, the gel glue came out. And um, regular glue 
doesn't really hold. Um, you can use a regular crazy glue or a regular Gorilla glue, but you really have to bond it up a lot with the powder. Um, so it takes some time. I have tried soldering these with tint solder, and it does work. Um, it's just harder to file down and shape. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, experiment with everything, but I find this to be the best so far. And this car obviously has a broken glass. Glass is totally missing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make glass using um, just old package containers from Hot Wheels. Cut out the plastic. I'm going to heat it up and I'm going to shape it to make it fit in this car. It won't be original, but in the original it's clear glass. Um, so I'm just going to make a front and a back and leave the side ones open because there is an interior. Um, so I'm do do a front one and a back one to cover the engine, leave the sides. But I may change my mind. Um, and like I say, put some custom wheels on it. If you want to tint that kind of plastic. A uh, little secret, um, if you take ink from a pen and uh, put it in just a little drop, drop or two inside of uh, pledge floor wax like, uh, like this right here. This makes great clear coat for cars too. Um, this, this is discontinued, so stock up, but there are some other brands that are similar. Um, but anyways, um, so what you do is you put a little bit of uh, blue ink or whatever color you want to tint the glass. It's a couple of little drops with uh, these little things that you can buy dirt cheap on Amazon. And uh, it will tint the clear coat and you, you spray coat the, uh, the plastic the wrapper plastic on the inside and um, you'll have a tinted glass. Uh, it turns out really really good. Um, shaping the glass is not a fun process. I'm going to try vacuum form which is basically heating up the plastic over a vented screen that's connected to a vacuum cleaner and you want to heat it up with a heat gun and then drop it on this vacuum and over the screen which holds a mold of say um, uh, 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 you know an existing piece of glass I could take this one and do it but say for this one here this one is a broken piece of glass so I'm going to make a template um, basically you can get this two-part silicone paste put this in here and make a um, uh, a template so of the inside of this so when I peel it out now I've got the mold for the vacuform plastic to go over and I can put that on that screen and when I turn on the vacuum after that plastic is heated and I drop it all together it sucks the plastic around the item that uh, is on that screen which in this case would be the template for this and you'll have a new windshield and you just have to trim it out. It's pretty slick. I've tried a couple of things with it and uh, it works pretty good. Um, I just have to find the right grade or thickness of plastic. It's too thick. Uh, it doesn't work for me. Uh, the thinner stuff works best. So, but we'll see. I do have this car to mold it off of for the shape. Um, but this one, I might be able to just cut it and get it to crease in we'll see but so that's the scoop that's how we fix uh, the metal bodies I've got a few of them that are busted up and so far it's holding pretty good this one's strong I put enough in we're gonna file it all down inside once it's dry we have to make room for uh, the seats to go in so there's two little prongs two little prongs here where the seats go in I have to clear the glue out of that area and that shouldn't be a problem. Anyways, that's all we're doing today. We're going to clear coat the uh, 
the Brooks Daytona Charger wing car uh, probably later today. Uh, that's that'll be put back together. It's all deckled up. It looks great. I want to do some testing to make sure the decals don't uh, spread like or run with clear on them. Uh, the quality of the decals was phenomenal. Um, for the price I paid, I paid more for the stickers than I did for the model back in the day. Um, the stickers are absolutely great, have the chrome numbers. I just got to make sure that when I put the clear on that that's not going to go dull or run because the inks do run on some of these printer decals which I found out the hard way. These ones seem really good quality so I'm just going to do a couple of test areas and, and hope for the best. Thanks for watching.